Hi, I'm Logan. I'm the furniture flipping entrepreneur. I teach others how to make money by flipping furniture. My first month flipping furniture, I made over $1,500. That was my first month and I had no experience going into it. Today, I'm gonna to share the five essential things you need to know before you start making money flipping furniture. me I've tried just about every side hustle out there and this one by far is the fastest to get started and takes the least amount of time to start making money flipping furniture is the process of finding unwanted furniture fixing it up and then flipping it or selling it online for a profit whether you're looking for an amazing side hustle or you just want to quit your job like I did I'll teach you everything you need to know about the furniture flipping game Number one on the list of things you need to get started is transportation. There are really two options when it comes to how you're gonna transport your furniture. You're gonna to need to either own your own vehicle or you're gonna to have to outsource your transportation to a third party. So I'm lucky enough to have my own truck. So I transport the furniture myself. That being said, you can outsource the transportation of your furniture to a third party. For example, using a service like TaskRabbit or just finding somebody on Facebook Marketplace and you pay them a small percentage of what you make and profits for that flip. The advantage to using somebody else to deliver your furniture is you won't have to pay for gas and you'll have a lot more time to either refurbish the furniture or source more furniture. You don't have to waste a lot of time transporting the furniture, which can take up a bunch of your time. Number two on the list of things you need to get started is you need to get a few tools. Down below in the description, I have a list of all the tools you'll need to get started. And I also included some tools that'd be really helpful down the road as you start bringing in some more money. You need access to the internet. You can't flip this furniture without Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist and other online marketplaces. So you're gonna need some internet, whether that's your own computer, or maybe you could go to the library and use free internet if you don't have internet of your own. For cleaning chairs and sofas that have upholstery, you're gonna to have to get a vacuum. Sometimes all you need to flip a sofa or a chair is to give it a good cleaning. So it's really important you have a good vacuum and a vacuum that can take out stains or any kind of markings in the upholstery. I'd highly recommend the Bissell upholstery vacuum. That's the one I personally got. And it works really, really well at getting those stains out and also getting rid of any unwanted odors that may have come from the house. The Bissell upholstery vacuum that I got is around $155. If you're trying to refurbish wood furniture, like dressers and hutches, uh, wooden chairs, dining room sets, you're gonna have to get paint, paint brushes, sandpaper, spray paint, sealer spray paint, plastic wood, and you're gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver. Now, when I first got started, I made a lot of mistakes when it comes to painting wood furniture. I bought paint that was way overpriced, and I also bought a lot of tools I didn't really need. So a big secret I learned when buying paint is look for the discount paints. Most like Home Depots, Lowe's, anywhere that sells paint will usually have paint that someone else tried to make, and they either like the wrong tint or like an off shade. And so these stores put them on discount racks where you can buy them for like $10 a gallon, which is way better than the usual like $30 a quart, which is what I paid when I first got started. Don't make the same mistake as me. Also, when you're buying paint, make sure it already has the primer mixed in. Primer can set you back about $35, and it's not something you absolutely need when you're first getting started. It can improve the quality down the road if you put on a primer before the paint, but there's a lot of paints nowadays that have the paint and primer mixed in together so you can simply put on a few coats of that and only buy one bucket of paint as opposed to a primer bucket and also a paint bucket. In terms of paint brushes, I like the ones with the little small handle so it gives you more control in tight corners. Once you have the money, it also really helps for bigger pieces if you invest in a paint foam roller. That'll save you a lot of time and energy. But if you can't afford it right now or you're trying to start really, really cheap, you can paint wood furniture with just paint brushes. It's just gonna take you a little more time. For sandpaper, make sure you buy a 120 grit and a 220 grit. Sandpaper is essential to get off the old coat or to clean it up. Make sure your piece is really, really smooth before you apply the new coat of paint or your new finish. You can just buy the normal sandpaper that you use your hand with and down the road, you should invest in an orbital sander, which is a plug-in hand tool, which will also speed up the process of making furniture. But when you first get started, all you need are those simple sheets of sandpaper that you use with your hand. Now remember, with tools, it all kind of depends on your budget and how much time you wanna spend flipping furniture. 
the more money you spend on tools, the more time you'll have to invest back into the business and to maybe finish other pieces. But if you're starting on a really, really low budget, remember you can start really, really cheap. How much you spend also depends on your strategy for getting into furniture flipping. If you want to start with just chairs and sofas and furniture with upholstery, all you need to buy is a vacuum, which will set you back $155. That's it. That's the only money you need to get started flipping some furniture. The total it cost me to get started in flipping upholstery items like chairs and sofas and also wood furniture is $231.99. Number three on the list of things you absolutely need to get started flipping furniture is you're gonna need some type of storage. There are two types of storage. If you are lucky enough to live in a big home or a place with a garage, you can use your own personal space to store the extra furniture until it gets sold. Now, if you're like me, I live in a thousand square foot apartment. It's pretty tiny. I live in here with my girlfriend, so we don't have a lot of space for extra furniture or working on furniture, painting furniture, anything like that. We don't even have a porch. I was using the apartment complex parking garage. I got a lot of strange glares at cars driving by, not knowing what I was doing, painting large bookcases and cleaning chairs and sofas. They probably thought I was a weirdo. When I finished the furniture, I would drag it down the stairs and put it in our little apartment. And as you can imagine, things filled up pretty quickly. So I started looking around town for a storage unit. I found a really great one that they were pretty flexible with me painting and sanding and doing all kinds of shop type stuff within the storage unit. It's like a drive up storage unit so I can put the furniture in take it out really quickly, 24 hour access, and it cost me $279 a month. Now that's a pretty big expense, but it made furniture flipping so much easier. And by having a designated place where I can work on furniture and store furniture, it allowed me to speed up the furniture flipping process, which allowed me to invest that time back in the business and have more money coming in. Now, if you're in the same situation as me and you don't have a lot of space to store or work on furniture, I'm gonna have an in-depth video in the future talking all about how to find the right storage unit and what you need to be looking for, so stay tuned. Number four on the list of things you absolutely need to get started flipping furniture is staging. Staging is one of the biggest advantages that not enough people will tap into when they're trying to flip furniture. You oftentimes see pictures of couches in front of storage units, or they just have it dragged out in their front yard. It looks very unattractive to the buyer and they can't really visualize what it's gonna look like in their apartment. One way you can fix this is by staging your furniture. So having a backdrop that looks really pleasant, having blank walls, like something close to how you think the buyer would use the furniture in their own space. When I first got started, like I said, I was using my own apartment complex. I'm lucky enough to have really tall ceilings and really pretty white walls with uh, concrete floors. So a lot of like white, which is pretty popular right now. So I would just move everything aside, get everything, all the clutter out, push it up against the wall, make it really pretty, as pretty as possible. Look for trinkets or plants or throw pillows, anything you can to enhance the piece of furniture to make it look really nice on camera. And then take the best picture you can. The nicer camera you have, the better the pictures will look. But you can also just use your phone. If you use the right lighting, get it close to a window kind of like this video right here, all I'm using is natural light and it's coming in and it makes a nice effect on the subject. So you can do the same thing with your furniture. When I moved into my storage unit, this became a real challenge. As you can imagine, storage units don't have the prettiest interiors. The walls were yellow, had a bunch of holes in it. You can see like the metal sliding door if you go too high up. So it made it really challenging to make these pretty pictures with my furniture. So what I had to do was create a staging wall. Now I won't go too much into detail about how I made that staging wall in this video. I will make a video about that in the future, but really quickly, the staging wall was pretty simple. I got three wall panels at Home Depot and I got four eight foot two by fours and I pretty much made like a fake wall. The wall panels have uh, like a white pine kind of look. And once you take a picture of the furniture, you can't even tell it's like a fake wall. And then I just used the lighting from the big open bay door in my storage unit to create the proper lighting. Now, the last thing on the list, number five of things you absolutely need to get started flipping furniture is you need a Facebook account. Now, there are a lot of online marketplaces you could potentially look into to sell your furniture once you have finished it. But my experience has shown that Facebook by far 
is where the majority of my sales come from. Now what's important with Facebook Marketplace when you're making your listing is, as we mentioned earlier, have really nice pictures. That's the first thing people will see when they're browsing furniture. So make those pictures as high quality as possible. You also want a really clear description, any blemishes or markings or dents, you wanna make sure you mention in the post. Have an eye-catching title, and when you're communicating people through Facebook messages, make sure you're really friendly. Sometimes people can be a little rude or a little pushy, but don't let that bother you. Just keep being friendly and eventually you'll make that sale. All right, so now you know the five essential things. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for future videos where I tell you everything I know about flipping furniture and making money.